back again. Today is going to be acoustic finger picking. So the last couple episodes were acoustic strumming and I was playing my Martin D15 and that's a mahogany top back and sides guitar. So it's got a really warm woody sound and I don't want to play the same guitar and just have those textures just piling up. I want to do something a little different so I'm going to use my Gibson Hummingbird just to switch it up. It's got a very different sound so it'll separate from the other guitar tracks in the mix. So acoustic finger picking is a pretty quiet instrument so when I mic these up I'm gonna to have to boost the gain a lot on the microphones. When you do that you introduce any noise that's in the room and that could be a problem in a home studio such as this like today there's a window right there and it's raining outside and you can hear a little bit of it. I can hear it. I don't know if the mics are picking it up right now, but if we boost the gain for recording that acoustic finger picking part, we might pick up some rain if it starts to come down. And not only that, but this HD24 unit that's got the hard drives in it generates a little bit of noise. So we want to isolate that too. So what I've done is set up this beautiful green blob and let's take a look at what this is and see if it actually works. Okay, what we have here is essentially a makeshift gobo. So gobos are used in recording studios to isolate different instruments. You might put them up around the drums to avoid getting drum bleed into, say, a guitar microphone. So what this is here is just a couple layers of blanket. So this is a just like kind of down comforter. And this is a weighted blanket and they're all just draped over this microphone stand that's top bar is straight across. So that's the setup for this. And that allows this unit to have a little bit of versatility. I can move it. I don't have to depend on a blanket draping over something else. I can just pick it up and move it if I so choose. If I need to move it, which is very likely because mics have to move and guitars have to move. All right, let's see if this thing actually works. I've got this microphone. I've got the gain cranked up quite a bit on it. So we're going to listen to this microphone. We're going to hear the difference of moving it around to see if this thing actually blocks out some of that outside noise. So let's check it out. I would say that yes, it does block out some noise. You might be wondering if it really matters that much to block out the outside noise. Well, the reason we're trying to do that is not only just from what we're hearing while we record it. If you hear anything while you're recording it, anything you do to process the signal is going to bring up that noise, typically. If you compress the signal, you're going to bring up all that background noise for the entire track. If you EQ the guitar to make the guitar fit into your mix and some of these frequencies are the same frequencies that this hard drive is generating. You're going to bring out more of that hard drive. So we want to just try to tame it now and it's definitely a problem in the home studios from the less than perfect acoustic environment. You want to isolate that outside noise and that's a big problem to keep the, we, we of course want to keep the sounds inside from getting out if you're playing drums or anything like that you want to not disturb everyone in the neighborhood but also you don't want to let those outside noises come in so there's little workarounds this is one of them it's not perfect but uh, we make do with what we have I've got the microphone set up now I'm trying to keep them as close to this barrier as possible that way it's actually doing its job getting rid of that background noise so you'll see the microphones I'm using are the SE1As, the small diaphragm condensers. And it is a matched pair. You don't necessarily need to use a matched pair on an acoustic guitar. And doing this as a spaced pair like this, essentially the sound hole of the guitar is going to be in the middle of the two mics. One mic is pointing at the neck around the 12th fret. The other one is pointing toward the body. So you'll get some separation and you'll hear like a left and right signal. It'll give it a little bit more width 
than using just a single mic. I often like to double guitars like I did in the last couple of episodes, but with something like finger picking where it's a little more intricate, it's hard to get those doubles. So that one single take is kind of what you need to get, and this way you get that left and right width. Okay, I've just done the same thing I did in the last acoustic guitar videos, which is record a test track and then listen back to that. And while listening back, add some EQ and compression. So I set that and then I dialed it back a little bit just to keep it very subtle. So I added a little bit of high end and I cut some low end just because we don't want any low end from this in this song. And I added a tiny little bit of compression using my FMR RNC and just barely, barely doing that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to record this. This is the track that I just recorded. It sounds nice and clear, crisp. So the reason I had the two mics up was to give it some width, panning one mic to the left ear and one to the right ear. And right now it's not panned, so check this out. What happens when I do pan it? It's going to sound nice and wide. Adds a bit of dimension. So now let's, of course, bring in some of these other instruments. So there's the strumming guitar. Okay, let's back to just the finger picking guitar that I just recorded. Okay. And now I'm just going to go through the board audio. So you can hear what happens first, I'm going to bring up the guitar, and then I'm going to bring up the fake drums. And you'll hear where this song's going. And there we have it without the new finger picking part, okay? Bring it back in. with it definitely add something So there we have it, the first track of the finger picking guitar for this album. I've only got 10 more songs to do now and 
I don't really have all these parts planned out, so it's going to take a little bit of time. But thanks for checking this out today. So just to recap, we set up the microphones, got that guitar recorder, we blocked out some sound with this thing, we recorded through the board, EQ'd and compressed again to tape, and we just kind of listened back to see how this album's coming along. And I think it's sounding pretty nice so far. It's what I want it to be, kind of mellow, chill, and uh, just a nice, crisp, clear sound. So next time we'll get back to more recording. Stay tuned.